Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk NBA playoffs. Now, this has been really a rocky road for me this year. Let's talk about it. I know it's cost me subscribers on my uh, pay site here on YouTube. You know, I fully expect it right now. Fully expect it. The defending champion, San Antonio Spurs, to be one of the Final Four teams standing. Right? I thought the Spurs, quite frankly, had the clear edge over the Los Angeles Clippers. I thought there was simply no comparison with regard to the benches. Right? Game six in San Antonio. With San Antonio up in the series, 3-2, looking at a closeout, was simply a startling game for me. I congratulate the Los Angeles Clippers on winning that game. I congratulate the Los Angeles Clippers on then winning Game 7. I have the utmost respect for Doc Rivers. Quite frankly, I'm still wondering how he did it. Right? I know Austin Rivers stepped up. No question about it. I know Chris Paul, with a bad hamstring, somehow kept hitting shot after shot and kept creating play after play in the second half of Game 7. Truly one of the best Game 7 performances I've ever seen in a game that, quite frankly, came down to the last basket. So understand, when I look at Houston and I look at Golden State, this isn't the matchup I expected, right? I really thought that one of these two teams would be the Spurs. Let's also talk briefly about Golden State. I thought they'd have a much tougher time with the Memphis Grizzlies, right? I'm still amazed at Game 4 in Memphis, with Memphis up two games to one in the series, Right, I tip my hat to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I'm in the Bay Area. I watch them more than other teams simply because of what's on TV out here. And let's just say Golden State surprised me in how they were able to come back in that series. In particular, I'm surprised in Game 4 that Memphis didn't even cover Right at home. And they were the underdogs in that game. Let me also say that I thought it was over for the Houston Rockets. Now, let me just say to Rocket Nation bluntly, uh, congratulations. I was wrong about your team. I was wrong about the heart of your team. Right? I thought the team was a bit dysfunctional. I thought personalities like Josh Smith, you know, there's a reason why Josh Smith flamed out in other places. Right? Dwight Howard was hurt for a long stretch of the season. Uh, when it came to handicapping coaches, let's just say I don't place Kevin McHale in the same category that I place guys like uh, Doc Rivers, for example. Right? You know, game six, late third quarter in Los Angeles with L.A. up big. Looking at a closeout, looking at the first Western Conference Finals for that team in a long time, if ever, right? Houston showed the kind of heart that, quite frankly, deserves a tip of the hat. I was astonished. Right then, you get to the fourth quarter, and somehow they completely shut down Blake Griffin in that fourth quarter. And Blake had been terrorizing them the preceding three quarters. Right? I'm not one to question Houston's heart. Now that said, all of that said, right? And kudos to Dwight Howard, kudos to Kevin McHale, kudos to Josh Smith, kudos to James Harden, guys I've doubted. Right? Now all of that said, it's a new round of the playoffs, and in my opinion, of these final four games, right? Cleveland, Atlanta, Golden State, Houston. I think the best bet here are the Golden State Warriors to win the series prop over the Houston Rockets. 
I know Houston's riding high. I think people right now are, you know, totally appreciative of Houston's offense. No question about it. I think they re recognize now that Dwight Howard is healthy, right? Let me just say, though, if you look at the numbers, forget the regular season. Just look at the playoff numbers. Golden State is much better, and I mean much better, than Houston defensively. Folks, they're in different area codes. They're in different time zones, right? Golden State really is one of the league's elite defensive teams. Let me say this, too. You have some stealth superstars on the Golden State Warriors. You know, it surprised a lot of people that Draymond Green finished second. Think about that. Second in the Defensive Player of the Year voting. Right? I believe Cowie Leonard's the person who won it. Draymond Green finished second in the voting. I'm telling you, if you look at the Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green really is a superstar. I believe it's his low-key personality that throws people off, right? When Golden State needed a win against the Memphis Grizzlies, they put Draymond Green on Marc Gasol. Now understand, Marc Gasol is one of the very best centers in the game. Draymond Green is 6'7". I'm telling you, that performance is one of the best performances in these playoffs, right? Draymond can play big. Draymond is an excellent defender, right? Let me point out, too, forget the Splash Brothers for a moment, right? Curry and Klay Thompson, forget them for a moment. They're obviously the media focal point of this team. What I want you to do is to realize that one of the best perimeter defenders today in the league is Andre Iguodala, right? one of the best perimeter defenders. You hardly ever hear about him. One of the longest guards in the league, certainly a problem for anybody on defense, is Sean Livingston off the bench. You hardly ever hear about him. Right? The Warriors were having problems offensively against an excellent Memphis Grizzly defense. They turn to David Lee. Now David Lee, in my opinion, remains one of the worst defenders in the National Basketball Association, right? I've watched David Lee for years. I'm a Knicks fan. I remember when David Lee played for the Knicks, right? He can't stop anybody defensively. But understand offensively, the guy's a juggernaut. He's one of those guys who can come in a game and literally score eight points in about four minutes. Right? Festa Sizili. People are saying, who is he? I'm telling you, he is an above average defensive player. Now, Clay Thompson can be shut down by good defensive teams. You stick a Tony Allen on Klay Thompson and Klay Thompson will disappear. The question I have is whether without Patrick Beverly, the Houston Rockets have a Tony Allen to put on Klay Thompson. Because the problem is if your team's not great defensively, that's when Klay Thompson arrives at the party. That's when suddenly it's not MVP and company. It's not Steph Curry and friends. That's when it becomes the Splash Brothers. Right? I'm not sure if Houston will be able to stop Klay Thompson. If you can't stop Klay Thompson, you're looking at a team that won 67 games in the regular season. Right? Golden State is favored over Houston. I think they should be. As good as Houston has played of late, let's be clear here. They just won three in a row against the Clippers. Right? Every game was an elimination game. The Houston Rockets stormed back. Right? Houston's on a roll. I think that roll ends right here. 
right? I think Golden State beats Houston. I think Golden State comes out of the Western Conference. Let's talk about the Eastern Conference. Now, I'm personally hoping because of my own bets, futures and stuff like that, that LeBron James' Cleveland Cavaliers win the Eastern Conference. Here's the problem I have. Here's the only hesitation I have. You know, Cleveland's banged up already. Anderson, Varejo, he's out. He's been out. Now, of course, during the playoffs, during the playoffs, you lose Kevin Love. Right? That's awful. Now, I'm hearing about Kyrie Irving having a problem knee. Folks, could the timing be any worse? I don't, I don't like the idea of Kyrie Irving being a game time decision. I don't know what that means. Right? Is this guy going to miss games during this series? I'm not sure how comfortable I feel. And keep in mind, I said I was a Knicks fan. I'm not sure how comfortable I feel with LeBron as Batman, and then Robin being J.R. Smith? I, I, Shumpert? Uh, you know, let's just say I like the idea of LeBron and Kyrie Irving against the world. Now you're stripping back the team even further. This might be about LeBron and a supporting cast, just like it was last year in the NBA Finals. Miami against San Antonio. How'd that work out for LeBron? So, I think the Cavs have the talent to win the series. Right? I'm going to have a wait-and-see approach. Because I'm not sure right now if they have the health to win the series. Right? I don't like the idea of Kyrie Irving, a big-time part of that team. Not just from a shooting perspective, but also from a ball handling perspective, right? And from a penetration perspective. Without him, anything can happen. So I'm going to wait and see on the East. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for all of us here. You don't have to agree with me. Lord knows people who follow this uh, YouTube account know that's the case. If you have a different take, if you believe it's Houston's time, if you believe the ATL has been disrespected all year, you were the one seed out of the East, you have the home court right now in the East, right? Didn't you just silence Paul Pierce, right? Don't you have one of the games more underappreciated big man in Al Horford and isn't a three-point shot almost like a layup for Kyle Korver and a few other guys on your team? And isn't Paul Millsap healthy right now? If you believe Atlanta or Houston is going to rise to the occasion, if you believe I've been a bit too hard on Klay Thompson or a bit too soft on Draymond Green, if you feel that the coaching is going to factor in here, right? Atlanta has the coach of the year. Cleveland has a coach who was trying to call a timeout in a key moment of the game when Cleveland didn't have timeouts, right? If you feel I've been hard on Kevin McHale, if you feel I haven't talked up Steve Kerr enough, then I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.